The last few chapters of the book, The Peacemaker, deals with the Copal Indian people living on the coast of Oregon, and it gives a little bit of their history and how they lost their rights and their status, and then it brings it up to the present and how the things that they have done to regain their status and some of the controversy around that. And I'd just like to read a section about the part in the book that tells how they lost their rights and what happened to them. Pauline remembered the stories her father told her about her ancestor from the Mohawk Bear Clan, who came west in the early 1800s. His name was John Abel Little Bear, a rough mountain man who lived among the Crow and trapped furs in the Bighorn River Territory. John Abel was well known at all the rendezvous and always had the largest number of pelts. He often lived with the Crow when not fishing or trapping. In 1821, John married a Crow woman from the Yellowstone Territory. His wife took care of the home and children while John was away, often months at a time. The Crow matriarchal society matched his own cultural heritage that he shared with his many children around the bison teepees fires during the harsh winters. John's eldest son joined his father as a teenager and wandered the Rocky Mountain area with him during the 1830s, following the beaver across the Sierra Nevadas into California and the Columbia River to the Pacific Ocean. By the 1840s, the beaver was almost extinct and the desire for beaver pelts was replaced by gold fever. John Abel retired, enjoying a high rank among the Crow people that had become his family. John's son, Eagle's Feather, changed his name to Henry Little Bear, taking his wife and young family along the Oregon Trail with a group of mountain men and Quakers to settle in the Willamette Valley. One of Henry's sons did not take to farming. He longed for the outdoor life, roaming the woods, trapping, and fishing. He traveled south to the area that became Bandon, Oregon. He lived in a cedar plank lean-to on the Copal River and fished for salmon and hunted like the Copal Indians, eventually marrying into the Copal tribe. He and his Copal wife were Abel Little Bear's ancestors. In 1851, French-Canadian trappers discovered gold at Whiskey Run Beach. The trappers brought diseases of smallpox and malaria, and by 1854, only a few hundred of the 8,000 Copal remained. In addition, mining debris polluted the rivers so the salmon runs were diminished. Eels, crayfish, freshwater mussels, and trout choked on the flood of mud. All burning was outlawed so the tarweed seeds and blackberries could not regenerate. The camas root pasture for horses and cattle disappeared. In 1854, 300 armed white men invaded the Quoqua village, burning and roasting 16 men, claiming they were planning an attack to drive the white men away. By 1856, the few remaining Copal were forced to march through the winter snows over rocky headlands and sand dunes to the Siletz Indian Reservation. Teenager Cyrus Little Bear survived the march. Life on the reservation was difficult, but Cyrus enjoyed hunting and fishing like his ancestors among the 30 different bands of about 15,000 Indians. They made dugout canoes from cedar logs and ate acorns, berries, camas root, and salmon. They hunted with bows and arrows and bartered using dentalium shell 